Now, a giant leap to the Galapagos. Uh, I'm not quite sure why I made such an incredible height there in my jump. I think possibly I didn't want to get my boots wet. I hate having wet boots. Um, this is Post Office Bay on Floriana. Those of you, I'm sure, who've been there will, will recognise uh, that beach there, very famous beach where Darwin landed. I'm sure he made a slightly more elegant landing on the beach there. But this was our, our attempt. Extraordinary place. Those of you who've been there uh, will just know how absolutely riveting it is. Almost everywhere you go, there's an incredible sight. And one of the great joys for us as a TV team was that when you're filming the animals, and Rob will vouch for this, normally if you're trying to film wildlife, you get the infamous backside shot because whatever creature it is takes fright and then runs away from you. These guys actually come a bit too close. I mean, there we were doing this interview with our guide uh, with a giant tortoise uh, barging in uh, and actually almost being a little bit awkward. But it does make working there an absolute joy. It was the most remarkable experience for all of us. Um, one of our stories, we filed twice to coincide with Darwin, the 200th anniversary of Darwin's birth. One of them focused on the Floriana Mockingbird. This picture is from the Natural History Museum just down the road. These are two of the birds that Darwin bagged. Um, and as I'm sure many of you know, the Floriana mockingbirds no longer exist on the island of Floriana. Uh, extinction and uh, species being threatened and endangered is one of the big uh, threats and problems on the Galapagos Islands. Now, these particular birds do survive on a little tiny island called Champion. Two little islands, one of them's called Champion. Now, only scientists are allowed to visit. The chap in the big sun hat is a Swiss scientist. He's on the island. Um, we're in the little boat, not allowed to land. But we were very, very keen to get video footage of the Floriana mockingbirds on this little island. So we gave him a camera, uh, which sounds terribly easy. Uh, but as you'll see in this next clip, it's, it's a little bit tricky maneuvering. Black lava rock is very sharp and there's a heavy swell. Around us, sea lions play in the waves. We keep an eye on them. The males can get aggressive. I'd love to come on ashore, but I know we're not allowed to. So hopefully when I give you this, you can do a bit of filming. And I don't know how easy it's going to be for you to film the Floriana Mockingbird. Fantastic. OK. To record? to record. I'm told it's idiot proof. Well, that doesn't mean it's idiot proof no, no. for me, but I'll try. <laughs> Very best of luck. Now, we'll have to just maneuver. There's a sea lion in the way. Right. <laughs> I mean... Hand over itself is perilous. Yeah. Got it? Yep, got it. We're very lucky. The scientists managed to film a mockingbird for us. It comes into their camp and feeds near Paquita's feet. This is very rare footage of a bird that's very close to the edge. This has got to be the strangest interview I've ever done. Later, we shout across the swell, Just wary me, of a sea lion. Roughly, are you finding the population of mockingbirds is OK here or in trouble? No, it's, it's OK. So here, here on Champion, there are uh, here on Champion, there is now as many as, as about 46, 47. And that's more than there have been for many years. So that's good uh, news. That's very good news. Half a world away, the mockingbirds that Darwin himself brought back, here at the Natural History Museum in London. These birds provided a cornerstone for his theory of evolution. Collected on different islands, he noticed they were slightly different. That's why the conservation of the mockingbirds now is seen as so important. Of course, one of the great challenges is development, the growth of tourism. It's now really very, very easy to get to the Galapagos Islands. When we were there a couple of years ago, I think there were five or six flights a day from the mainland. I don't know what the number is now. So the great challenge is what do you do about all the people who are coming in and all the stuff that comes in to support them? The great threat 
is to the wildlife from what scientists call invasive species, species that aren't really meant to live there, but turn up and can cause havoc. On, All this development requires more imports, and every box, every sack, could be carrying with it something unwelcome, a plant or an insect that can threaten the delicate ecosystems. Something conservationists are really worried about is what they call invasive species, plants, animals, insects that turn up here in the Galapagos and threaten the wildlife. The most famous example is that of goats brought here centuries ago, that turned wild and ate the plants that the giant tortoises depend on. Well, there are other threats as well, some of them much, much harder to see. I've been meeting one of the scientists trying to tackle them. You can find here in everywhere. Scientist in Henry Herrera is known as the Ant Man, and he shows me the latest cause for alarm. Almost too small to see, okay. these are fire ants can you see that? swarming in their millions. They attack everything, including young tortoises and researchers. It's brave work, but this is apparently the best way to collect samples. Okay. okay. We need to do something right now. To stop this? Yes. But the principal problem so now is to get money for you, this you need kind money of project. to fight these? Sure, sure, sure. The bites so they... are painful. Darwin oh, talked no. about the war of nature. He's inside my pants. <laughs> Evolution means survival of the vicious. Oh. He had a really tough time, actually, because the, the filming took a little longer than he'd have liked, that poor young scientist. He, we had to get him to do it several times and all this kind of thing. And poor guy was very brave, wasn't he? I mean, he, he really kept going. You could see his arms and legs. Uh, but he, he was determined to do the filming to illustrate for us and the audience of the BBC uh, you know, a, a classic example of an invasive species that's amazingly hard to control. Um, this is the traditional way to visit the Galapagos Islands. Um, I'd love to say the BBC chartered one of these for us. Uh, our budget was a little, little different. We had uh, really quite small boats to make the journeys between the islands. Um, and the problem we found is that Ecuadorian law means that there are restrictions on where you can land with certain boats. So the little launch that we hired one day wasn't allowed to land or stop at Floriana. So we did a deal through our guide with a cruise ship where we would borrow their launch, which did have a permit to land us on Post Office Bay, um, and in exchange, we'd give a little talk on the vessel. In fact, they gave us lunch as well. We felt slightly like pirates turning up uh, and making ourselves extremely comfortable because it was a very nice vessel. Um, what I enjoyed about doing the talk was the enormous range of questions. Um, on the tourists on board, many of them asked about the technical details of how we film, how we broadcast, how we got the material back to London from the Galapagos Islands, um, how we chose the stories, what our impressions were of, uh, of the islands and compare and comparisons with other parts of the world. Um, and I, I thought their, their questions were impressive and varied. No pressure when it comes to the Q&A <laughs> session this evening. I'm going to leave it on that note, but with a final thanks once again for Rob McGee, who is the cameraman on most of the videos you saw tonight, and Mark Georgiou, who took all of the good stills um, and sadly is stuck in Tripoli tonight. Thank you very, very much indeed.